all day, keep this all low, relaxed. I'm just going to stretch. Relax. Just straight to like SQL. SQL. SQ Fitness, bro. It's like, the pre warm here, man. Yeah. yeah, we actually went through a training obstacle course yesterday. Flame put us through. You know, bro, I mean, <laughs> us, the whole walk was a fucking. Yeah, it's true. Hike, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, that was really like, like 12,000 steps yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Can you guys touch your hands? <laughs> can you get your legs around your head? Yeah. Whoa. Oh my God. Uh, I'm in jeans. Oh, I can do it in shorts. I, looking at I can do it in shorts. Yeah, I'm in jeans right now. Stretch my legs. It's, it's me about to sit on the side. I'm already ready, bro. Yeah, yeah, right. like, put that band underneath your right foot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you're gonna step on it. And then you're gonna put it around your shoulder like this. Now stand up. Now stand up. Keep trying to raise that like, arm as high as possible. It's like, it literally feels so good. This is pretty good. Ours for the taking. Thrusters enabled. And I gotta say, HCS Orlando is HCS to the stratosphere. Oh, yeah. I smell it. I smell it all right. That's the open bracket. The intensity. Look at this. I cannot think of a better place to be than surrounded by the best of the best in the Halo scene. All out here, throwing down, no holes bar, 117%. This place is booming right now. I'm in your stream all the time, man. Uh, yeah. Yes! Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? They're playing with uh, drop off. The mangler and sword are kids. Start on a Friday. How you doing, dude? Let's get an SP shirt on too. Yeah. Yes. Yo, Mike, bro. Hey, I came ready. Yo, my mom's sporting SP up in right now. Open upper bracket round one goes in our favor. We played D Sync Esports. Apparently, and the convention center opened up two hours earlier than the scheduled time, so a bunch of teams got to warm up. Unfortunately, we did not see the memo, so these were the first two games we got to play. It looks like after our next match, if they are as skilled as the last team that we just played, we will be matching up against Complexity in open upper bracket round three. That is a big match. If we take them out, we steal the four seed in open bracket. And if I'm not mistaken, after that match, we would only have to win two more in order to make it to championship bracket, which is huge. I'm staying, I'm staying back in Salo, I'm staying back in Salo, I'm staying back in Salo. I'm holding back in Salo for uh, for white, white. Yep. No, 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 watch the map, watch the map, watch the map, watch the map. I saw about him go, Bob, watch out. There was one back in the driver, there was one back in the driver. Shut up, Salo, Salo. Yeah, we got me, we got me, he's on the bus, on the bus, on the left. Got him, got him. Next up, we got complexity for round three. Dude, we win this, it's cruise control. No BS. Good job. Huh? Yeah. 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 
Hey, hey, this is calm. I need you to relax, right? Hey, Where did he go? Tower. I killed the guy, Silo. He went to tower, and then I got I died at six stairs. Cause I was trying to I was trying to yeah, put my alive. yeah exactly. You watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! I'm gonna get right here and I'm gonna land. I'll kill this right now. Watch out! They're gonna push. They're gonna push right now. I'm pushing right now. Okay, before we review HCS Orlando, I want you all to take a good look. When HCS Seattle pops up after this little segment, you will see me with no facial hair. We decided to team up with Gamers Outreach for the Spooktacular Streamathon of 2022. Ended up raising over 1,500 bucks going straight to the kids all over the US. And for those less fortunate that are stuck in the hospital, in the ICU ward, or wherever it may be. Been working with them for who knows how long, believe I might've been one of their first streamers ever, and we've, from my recollection, have probably, with your help and the entire community, probably raised or created five to seven go-karts over the years. So just absolutely incredible. Big shout out to you all for helping and supporting the cause. But again, in HCS Seattle, at HCS Worlds, you will see a, a baby face flame. So just, just be ready for that. But to stay on topic, HCS Orlando now, this event I decided to coach. And as a coach, looking at it from the outside in, there are many things that I needed to be as beneficial as I could for the team. These are things that I've learned all year long. Obviously, we started with pro status at the beginning of the year at HCS Raleigh. We started trickling down our way as we continued changing the roster from the beginning of the year to the point that we are here today. Like I said, I decided to take a step back, become a coach, ended up picking up Dark Matter. The roster now, as you all saw, Dark Matter, Bop, Nessity, and Clutch. In my eyes, basically four players that still need a ton of experience to become the great players that I know that they will become. Um, and unfortunately, them being inexperienced and me being inexperienced as a coach, but experienced as a player and experience of knowledge of the game, we weren't able to come together to make it all work. And it's because obviously, like I said, two inexperienced entities in, in a say, you know, newbie team, newbie coach. Now, say I had experienced players in the team, I think things would have gone a lot smoother as a coach because people listening to me will most likely be relying on what I'm saying and understanding what I'm saying. As a new player, especially if you never you know, competed in whatever game you are competing in, there's so much things you have to learn. There's what you think you see from the outside, and then until you're really getting those solid S-tier reps against S-tier teams, there's little things that you just can't see through a stream, can't see through competition with casters. It's basically you have to experience it. You have to be in it to experience it and to learn what you have to do in order to become the better player. Obviously, 
How we finished is not what I would have liked to finish, especially for the last event. It was either get top 12 or your entire season is over for 44s at least. So with that placing, I believe it was top 64. That was our lowest placing all year, but it was a year of learning. Learned a ton of things from outside of the game to in the game. In the game, I understand that, you know, potentially in year two, and we'll get down the line in a future video to discuss, potentially may need two experienced players with two inexperienced players so people can learn and grow. Experienced players could get the perspectives of the new players and the new players can understand that halo instinct that these experienced players do have. So the trade-off is obviously an incredible one. I, I don't know what that was. As I said, wasn't the happiest with the placing. Even when it comes down to interviewing the guys and all that stuff, I feel in, in this first year, we could have done so much more. But I think the takeaway is that I, myself, and the team were able to live in the present. We're able to actually just enjoy the moments that we were in since this was their first year as players. This was my first year as a team owner, coach, player manager, creative director, the whole nine yards. So a ton of things that I learned, again, from inside the game and out, outside of the game. In year two, definitely be taking the squad out before the event just so they could get their mind off Halo 4 at night. So when they get into the venue the next day, they're just ready to go. It seems like a normal day to them. They weren't stressing the night before, you know, trying to figure out how they're gonna fall asleep since they're trying to visualize every single play in their head. That way our players could play at their best. Inside the game, like I said, experienced with inexperienced, which now as an owner is just as tough back in the day as a player when I had to make team changes, which thankfully back in the day didn't have to do too many. So this in a sense is a little bit more stressful, but at the end of the day, we are running a business. The goal is championships. I really, really want to win 4v4 championships. Obviously I won three in my career, so to see people continue to push that legacy that is status quo with more championships is a big thing on my mind. Follow along with better storytelling in year two, making sure I grab people's reactions, what they think after the series, and all that fun stuff. So year two, super excited. But before we get to that, we have HCS Seattle, which is up next. Gummy worms, and let me say, I'm lasered right now, man. I'm ready for the Yo, what? That's crazy. Yeah, I need a photo of that. What? <laughs> Bob, you gotta hit the band every time you walk in. What are you walking? You gotta do it. If you can't do it, I did it. I just did it. It was caught on camera. <laughs> I just did it. <laughs> They win every Slayer game besides one Slayer game, and they win every OBJ game besides one OBJ game. Damn. Oh, 
Are you recording this? I'm the best. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now, bro. I'm having fun playing this. I'm why am I fifth the whole game and then I win? I'm just make I'm just making it all myself so that for finals, you know. That's it. That's it. Clean fourth place. Good. Yeah, it's like NASCAR, man. The only one that matters is the last one yep. as long as you're in the race the entire time, bro. You gotta get to that grand finals. That's all we want. You gotta get that grand finals. I'm just... The dog is out, baby. Yeah, so first place. Goes to Buck. Yeah! 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 Right there, the world champ. Bob going in. Where do we start? Year one, in the books. Basically in the books. Season one, I would say, is a better way to say it since the first season of the Halo Infinite HCS season has come to an end. You saw both events, Orlando and Worlds. Unfortunately, Worlds, we were not able to play with our team since we did not make it in Orlando, and we will get into that here shortly. Before I continue on discussing Orlando and Worlds, many of you probably saw during Seattle that I had no beard, so I wanna give a big shout out to Gamers Outreach. During the month of October, they had once again, their spooky streamathon 2022. It was incredible. Their goal, if I'm not mistaken, was 350,000. We helped raise over 1,500. I believe everyone who participated in the month of October was able to raise more together collectively than 350,000. So, absolutely smashed the goal, which was impressive because we did all that leading into worlds. 
So going into Worlds, again, that is why you saw a baby face flame sword. Moving forward, before we get into ATS Worlds, ATS Seattle, we will talk a little bit about Orlando. And I guess just the overall theme of what you all saw this year from these videos. Now, I feel for the most part, the entire team, including myself, throughout the entire year have been pretty present to just enjoy the experience that we went through. Now, on one hand, that's incredible for, you know, the ones taking part. The thing in my head now that I've learned after season one is that for you all at home, all the viewers that did not make it to the event and not, you know, make it to a live stream during an online qualifier, whatever it may be, without those little interviews with our players and their reactions and all those things, you all miss out on the connection with the team that I am building and you all, right? Because at the end of the day, so many of you know who I am. I've been in front of this camera who knows how many times throughout the years of Optic, before Optic, when I was just status quo, a team made up of friends. And now that it's an official esports organization, I want to really follow suit on the things that Hector taught me, the things that I've learned being involved in the gaming industry since I was 15, now 33. So with that being said, I do hope you enjoyed all three episodes this year. Again, we were super in the present, which I did enjoy. But again, as now the head honcho, the uh, captain of the ship, I want to make sure that you all are able to connect with these players that I find because they, to me, are special, just as special as you all are, right? Like these things, I would not have been able to do my career if it wasn't for you. So just know in year two, I would do a lot better job of making sure everyone is taking part. And not only for myself, right? Status quo has been started up with the help of my partner and myself. We are investing into this straight out of our own pockets. So it's very important that what I believe and what I see in the future is shared with you all. And again, that comes back to me being better. That comes to me taking recognition that hey mike you're the one with the vision you're the one who has to understand in that present moment hey it's time to pull one of these guys and catch their reaction everyone has heard your reaction throughout your entire career let the young guns get their shot you know what i'm saying now moving into orlando you had to place if i'm not mistaken top 12 to make it to worlds for the 4v4s now unfortunately hs orlando was status quo's worst placing the entire year and it's unfortunate because I decided to step down because there was another player dark matter who and to this day I will say it is 10 times better than me when it comes to skill yes I have experience from all the years of me competing in Halo from the three championships that I won but in this day and age there is something to these new games that you do need and in my eyes those are the things I found in all four of my players Nessity Bob, Clutches, and Dark Matter. All four of them have what it takes to be some of the best Halo players out there. And now this was their rookie year. It does take time. There are not that many Shotzi's for all those watching at home. Like it takes time. If your career doesn't take off in that year time that you see some of these freaks like a scum, like a Shotzi. I'm trying to like think about all console games because that's pretty much the feel that I came from. But those are pretty much like the big names. Your Huke, guys over on Atlanta Phase, Simp and Ibizi, all young kids that are just freaks, right? And these are things that I found in my four players. So I was super confident in them, but definitely after Orlando learned, obviously skill isn't the whole equation. And what I felt that we lacked in Orlando was what, you know, me stepping away ultimately ended up in a result of, and that is being an in-game leader, a person, a voice that the players are going to listen to in-game because they listen to me in-game, right? But now that you have four inexperienced players that are still learning their style on how to make it work for Halo, you have, like I said, four different minds trying to get things done, and then you have my experience mind coming in but then not getting the full picture in a sense. So learning that from that event in year two, definitely going to look to put hopefully one or two experienced players with one to three of our inexperienced players. Because like I said, I think all four players on the team literally have what it takes to be top Halo players. 
And all it's going to take them is finding that one mentor that can connect the dots even further than what I already have taught them, right? Example, Nestle. Nestle got a shot on E United this year, and the way that Ryan Noob explained everything to him made it all click for him because, right, everyone perceives things differently, but you and I may perceive something the same, but that might not be the same for me and my teammate Bob. So it's very important that even though they have me as a mentor, as a leader figure, for them to go out on their own, play with other people and learn like, oh wait, like yeah, Flame won his tournaments and came up this way, but we're different than him. Like this guy, I seem to resonate with him a little bit more and, and that's the important thing. So with the off season now underway, hoping all the guys head out there, start playing with more people, start becoming more friendly with the community, especially the competitive side of it and play with as many people as they possibly can so they could see if there's a team for them in the future. The team that I want to put together, I get to have a better understanding who really wants it, who's putting in that time, who's putting in that work. So all super important things, all super important lessons learned from HCS Orlando and again learned in year one, season one. We had a close matchup with Complexity. They ended up 2 owing us. Oddball Streets round one blew us out. Round two, we made it so much closer. Game two was recharge Team Slayer. Unfortunately, we ended up losing 50-49. It was oh, decided by one kill which is insane, and that dropped us into the loser's bracket, and it didn't seem we could recover mentally. And again, I talk about this in Kansas City, how I should have been able as a leader to recognize, I should have uh, calmed my team down, so we would have been cool-headed and moved into the next game. I feel after the loss against Complexity, the mental just wasn't there, and now knowing that you can only lose one more series, it, in a sense for me from the outside, looked like a few of the guys were checked. Now, in my opinion, they all played incredible throughout the entire tournament, and when I say they played incredible, I'm talking statistically. I think all four are land machines. They literally show up individually to the tournament every time and impress me. And now going into year two, season two, the most important thing as I keep saying it over and over is just finding that experienced person or persons with this incredible inexperienced skill that we had and coming together to make a powerhouse. Not much more left to say about Orlando. On that note, Everyone ended up playing free for alls on Sunday. Bot made semifinals. Dark Matter made quarterfinals. Nessity, I believe, they made quarterfinals the round before that. And I believe Clutches didn't even partake in free for alls. And I totally understand them. Me as a player, I was always there for fours and never for free for alls, 1v1s, whatever it may be. I was, I'm a team player. I'm there for the team game. So I totally understand his mindset and i would have understood everyone's mindset knowing that they didn't make it to worlds how disappointing that must feel so you really don't want to play even though you're still at a gaming tournament there's still more to play for so totally understand the mindset it's not an easy thing to hurdle but it is what it is and on that note we are moving into hcs worlds hcs seattle i literally cannot believe in year one team status quo is able to hold up a world championship trophy just blows my mind now my goal obviously is to turn this thing into the next optic 100 thieves phase one of those big giants right like i want to create a home that has opportunities for many kids down the line to look at us and be like i want to join status quo this is an organization i want to be a part of because they are just massive they do everything right they do what i love they embody you know the pillars of life that i believe in all that good stuff and if you were to tell me in year one not only would we win one championship but a world championship me and Bob have had altercations throughout the year, and again, it's with me learning. But the man did it, man. The man has probably the roughest living situation of players that I've ever met in my life. Only, in, might be 19 now, but 18, 19 year old kid. Tough living situation, already living his life almost as an adult, helping out the family. For him to come in, broken controller before the tournament, PC down, only turning on once in a while, and still showing up and taking it, 
I'm beyond proud of the kid, man, right? Like, like I said, I think a thing that you probably heard throughout the entire conversation with me is lessons learned, highs and lows, you know? A lot of lows of moments that I wish I could take back and approach it differently without negative thoughts in my mind to where I am today where something pops up, I'm literally thinking of the solution. Solution, solution, solution. If I can't think of a solution, I ask someone who can help me. Maybe I'm not seeing it from the right light, but the man did it and I'm just lost for words again. The PC was thankfully able to work for at least three to four hours the night before when the new controller that I bought him ended up showing up to his place and he was able to get those three to four hours of free for all practice. Got on his flight the next day, free for alls were set up. Apparently one of the members from uh, HS Orlando who plays top eight didn't show up to the event. And since Bob had the most points all year long, he was automatically put into the semifinals. And all you had to do was place top four in the semifinals and you're moving on to the finals. And that's, again, man, this moment is, I am speechless, man. I'm so proud of the dude. We were playing, and I'm sure you saw it. There was a point where he wasn't even sure that he won, and I already knew it. I knew it. I knew the free-for-all rules. You know, I've been around the block. I knew it. He is just there trying to think, did I win? Did I win? And I'm there letting him know this kid who's been through the ringer all year. Face Invitational playing with the homie, ends up finding out that day that he is type two uh, or has type two diabetes, his whole life has changed. He has to now take different approaches to the way he eats, to the way he lives, right? Cause the wrong move could set that sugar over the limit, could be too low sugar and then scary shit happens. Again, the environment that, you know, he is from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Many other places out there in the US, there are definitely tough environments to grow up with, but super proud of the kid for hanging in. I know there were moments, like I said, that me and him had altercations where he almost stopped playing, but thankfully he has a great uncle and I'm sure his uncle, you know, gave him words of wisdom. I'm sure some of the people that bops are in the game community that he looks up to also told him the same thing. And him and I even talk about it to this day. It's like, yo, remember when we were beefing? It's like, yeah. Like, remember you were beefing, you didn't want to play at all for the rest of the year? And he was like, yeah. And I'm like, aren't you happy you did it? And I'm beyond happy because again, to win a world championship in your first year of running an esports organization, I don't know how many other people have done that. Obviously I want it in fours and that is going to be the goal in season two. But again, lost for words, man, a world championship. On that note, again, I'm just proud of the kid ready for season two i'm gonna stop talking and i'm gonna let his interview close us out because not even him for winning the championship the entire team all the guys that were part of status quo in year one this will be the year i will always always remember period we did have an FFA Championship happening this weekend as well and what congratulations on our FFA Champions League oh, one to grab her huh? because oh, yeah. everything's on the line talk to me about how you managed to pick up this trophy and what it means to you <sighs> it means a lot this is my first halo so you know it means to win a trophy like on land like for my first year so i'm very happy that i that i won i'm so glad now bob obviously it's a little bit different from 4v4 right yeah. obviously you're on your own here yeah. what's the mentality like going into something knowing you're on your own it's solo you got to do this for yeah. you you know how do you get yourself prepared and ramped up for it um, honestly, I didn't really get to practice as much, but I mean, I just had a strong mental of like, you know, make sure I trade and make sure, you know, I do a correct job of like trying to get a kill every life. So that's, that's what I did. Let me ask about, about yeah. maybe what, seven days ago, the prize pool was five X, I think from oh, yeah. five grand yeah, to no. 25 grand. Yeah, it was crazy. I was, I was, you being an FFA God, you probably saw that and you were probably like, oh, oh wow, yeah, that, it big. was crazy. I was, I was texting everybody like, yeah, they, they bumped the prize pool. Like, I can't wait to go. Heck yeah, you know, man. Like, Did it add to the nerves at all seeing yeah. that there was 25 grand all of a sudden? Oh, yeah. It was a little bit of a bigger event? Yeah, no, it was definitely like, so I'm nervous, but I, I was able to control it. Heck yeah, man, congrats. Bob, uh, I was thanks. able to watch a little bit of it, right? Yeah. Through a phone stream. Yeah. I didn't get to see, you know, it wasn't the best POV, but yeah. I still saw you taking faces. But yeah. who would you say was your hardest competitor? Who really ran you down to the wire in that final? Uh, um, so there was two people. 
um, Orky J and Command Station. Yep. Really wow. good players. Yeah, both great players. You know, they, they were giving me a tough time every time I, you know, I couldn't say their name, but like, I could tell, like, it's them. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, yeah. So definitely them too. Awesome. Incredible. So, Bob, you are an absolute true hero, and congratulations once again. Our FFA champion, everyone, yeah. please put your hands together for Bob. Thank you so, so much for joining us.